So in today's video, we're going to discuss how to do a mini cut. This one took seven weeks. Uh, the reason why we did the mini cut, and you may think, why do you need to do a mini cut in the first place? A mini cut will serve you if you're in a gaining phase and you've got like an event that you're like, I need to clean up. I need to be lean for this. So let's do a mini cut. Or it may be the case that you've, you've gone so far through the gaining phase and you've kind of overspilled got a little bit excited with the food, you weren't matching it with gym floor performance, therefore too much body fat started to accumulate, but you weren't content that you would really finished your gaining phase and wanted to go back into a proper cut. So a mini cut will serve you just to scrape essentially the fat off, not all of it, but a good majority of it, and allow you then to go again into your next phase. Uh, a mini cut can last anywhere from, I mean, as, as little as four maybe, and it's up to like 10 weeks. Post that, you, you're going into a full-blown fat loss phase of a 12, 14, 16, or 20-week uh, proper fat loss uh, protocol. So this one was a seven-week. Reason for it was he had a holiday uh, halfway through the gaining phase, so we needed to clean him up. Um, to, for context, uh, not taken with pump, taken with pump at the end, um, of course, so that is why he looks a lot, lot bigger. And for context, I will always be honest with you, you will look bigger when you are leaner. That is a hardened fact. So where he looks a lot bigger, he didn't lose muscle because it's only seven weeks, but you look bigger when you're leaner. Just just be aware of that, okay? So if you're new to the channel, my name's Tom Sergi. Welcome. I run the Gorilla Platoon, which is an online physique transformation program where we get results like this. My promise to you in today's video is that you'll know how to do a mini cut uh, if you watch all this uh, all the way through. And I'm going to explain to you off the back of the client result. You may have watched the last video, which has shown his full journey of the one year, which if you're starting out and you're maybe around 20% body fat and you're thinking, how much progress can I make in a year? I think his uh, example will, will give you a good bit of insight and also hopefully some motivation that where you want to get to is not actually that far away. It just You just need to apply the correct training protocols, nutrition, all that good stuff, and you will get there. But this video is going to dive into the specific of the mini cut uh, phase, so let's dance with that. So the first thing we needed to do was assess his start point. So he was 82.2 kilograms and 15% body fat. Now, your best means of assessing body fat is honestly through taking photos of yourself and comparing them to, that you'll find many graphs online. Let me give you a quick one that I have for myself and I'll show you how I actually get him set up. So this is my own uh, calorie calculator, which I've made and programmed so the formula spell itself, which is quite nice. So we got his initial start point uh, and then we wanted to assess his body fat in relation to this. And I believe he was sat around about the 15% mark. Again, I am only going off my experience with clients, my experience seeing hundreds of human torsos uh, and judging their body fat perspective because I don't have calipers. I can't come through the screen and take them because this is the online game. So photos, honestly, are the, are the best means of assessing body fat. The photos generally don't lie, to tell you the truth. Um, sometimes with calipers, they're only as good as the moron taking them, which is not always, not always accurate. And if you get two people taking it, then it's definitely going to be off. So with this, this calculator allows me to spit out his specific uh, data relative to his lean mass, which he was sat pretty much at 70 kg, uh, his RMR, which is at 18779, uh, his activity, which I know because obviously I'm speaking to him, uh, was sat at 155, so maintenance for him is around 29. So now with the setup, we need to put him into a deficit. We can go quite aggressive because it is a mini cut, and he had built a lot of tissue. It's not like he's coming to me in the very early phases where he's not carrying as much muscle mass, and we need to be careful of how low we go because we need enough fuel to drive that performance in the gym to grow and to build some tissue. But with him, we built a lot of the tissue through the gaining phase, so now we could then look to go fairly aggressive. Now, don't go so aggressive so quick. It's not a case of turn the fucking furnace up and it all falls, it all melts away. It's not like that. So you still need room for progression. So with that, we went for a five, best part of a 500 calorie deficit, started on 2461, uh, and the macro breakdown, one basically 170 protein, 55 fat, and 324 carbohydrates. So that was his initial setup. So we've got his calories and his macros, and honestly, this number is sacred when you're going through the transformation. You want to keep this as high as possible, no matter what form of cutting phase you're doing, because this will be your driving factor of gym floor performance. Gym floor performance is the greatest way you will retain tissue and even build some during any form of a fat loss phase. 
Throwing target is important. Don't compromise on it. But gym floor performance is the most important thing for building retained tissue. Of, of course, it, you're not. You can have the the best oil in the world. If your engine's garbage, your engine, your car's garbage. This is just the way it is. Uh, the program we opted for was one to always focus on the aesthetic for uh, upper body, and that's a push can, comprising of uh, three chest, uh, two shoulder, and two tricep. We do pull, which comprises of four back exercises, two uh, bicep exercises, legs, hitting all legs to be honest, quads, glutes, hamstrings, and calves, a rest day, and then chest and back, uh, a flavor of push and pull, and then its own day for arms and delts, capturing at least four to five arm exercises and four uh, delt exercises, abs going in on uh, pull and also going in on arms and delts as well. We opted straight away for 20 minutes of cardio. You want to be, if you're not going so aggressive with food, which we want to leave room for progression, you need to start with activity quite soon. You could go higher steps than I've done here with 10,000, but at what cost of time? How, if you don't have that much to do with your, with your day and you've got hours that you can go and walk, steps are beautiful. Why? Lower cost of fatigue. You're, you're more likely to be burning body fat. But... Most people don't have that time. So you're going to need to do some form of formal cardio. We opted for something that was non-impact, wouldn't accumulate fatigue, and that we could do daily. He was doing cardio every day for the whole of the mini cut. So we needed something that wasn't going to burn him out. What we opted for was either cross trainer, a bike, or a incline treadmill walk. Uh, you're looking at heart rate 120 to 130. So we started on 20 minutes, and obviously that left us room to progress that as well. Steps at 10K, we didn't really push this up for the, for the duration it could have been an option, but we didn't need to end up playing that card. And we knew we only had seven weeks to get him as lean as humanely possible. So the goal really was to get 75 kilos and get him as lean as we possibly could. Now, the next slide explains how we actually got to the goal. So the progressions we made. Now, you can see that we, we've got him on a certain setup, certain amount of calories, certain training program, certain amount of cardio, certain amount of steps. And also sleep as well would have been, uh, you know, as high as you possibly can, to tell you the truth, the better you can sleep, the, the more results you're going to make. Now, that will give us a certain result until it doesn't, and then we need to adopt a change. So straight away in week one, the change, the, the drop was okay, but it wasn't quite a full kilo, so what we opted for was to push cardio to 30 minutes daily. We then saw a very sweet change off the back of that, and progress really did uh, align, and we were two kilos on. Come, by the way, these are the end of the week changes, so end of week one, so week zero was the setup, end of week one, this is the change we made, so we opted for 30 minutes of cardio to progress it that way. Week two was very good, no need to, to make any changes. Week three, we then opted to push cardio to 40 minutes. You see what we're doing here, we're already... Well, he would have done four weeks of the seven-week transformation before we even touched his food. So he, this guy's on 2,400 calories and some, best part of 2.5, and we've not even touched his food. How do you think his dim floor performance was? Pretty fucking good, right? Um, so then at, at that point, we then needed to make a change. Now, I'm starting to run out of minutes of cardio, so what I went for now is food, and specifically fats. You may think, well, why fats? Well... You're never going to be at zero fat. I'm never going to put you on zero fat. And we started on 55. So if we can remove some fats, it's going to come at a high calorie reduction rate, creating that nice deficit, at a lower cost of food volume. The specifically, we removed uh, dark chocolate. So dark chocolate as well is very palatable. It's in our last meal of the day. Um, I've done a video on what meal plans I prescribe. And it's pretty much that. So if you want to go back and find it, that, you'll, that will add context to it. But we removed the dark chocolate, uh, took palatability out of the diet, made that last meal of yogurt and berries easier to then not overconsume, uh, And we got a high reward of 120 calories removed. We're then moving into week five. And I knew we, at this point we've got two weeks left. We're really going to drop the hammer and go aggressive. So we then removed some more calories, specifically peanut butter from meal one. Again, removing from fats. Because it got the goal is gym floor performance, so it would actually serve us to keep carbs as high as humanely possible, and of course protein. Um, so take from fats, pull pull from fats because you're never going to be on zero percent fat in a diet. And we also opted for sixty minutes of cardio. Now the last week we then went aggressive again, and these these check ins were actually done. We had twelve days. So this was done uh, 12 days out, and this last one was done six days out, where we just absolutely turned up the dial, took out uh, the rice of 50 grams, uh, uh, 177 calories, and opted for 60 minutes of cardio daily. And that got us uh, also the, the result it did. The overarching result was 
he ended up looking like this and we got down to 75 which was the goal so we dropped a kilo a week and we are coming in now at the 10% uh, body fat mark visible clean cut abs uh, looking nice and lean there is a uh, different photo where he, he probably looks leaner but drier but this is with pump and I want to show you uh, the difference of how it would look with a pump so that was that was how we adopted the mini cut that was that was everything in seven weeks how we made progressions where we started where we finished uh, and the result off the back of it what comes next is well he's, he's on holiday for a week so when he comes back we need to assess what scale weight are we at now wipe off that uh, excess water weight that we've put on so probably another week of deficit and then reverse yourself back into the progressive uh food building, you would do the same if you've done your mini cut and you say you weren't going on holiday, you just needed to scrape off the fat, you then start to reverse back out of your mini cut calories, just adding food where you need to see the scale weight start to increase. But most importantly, numbers in the gym and your lifts are actually progressing there as well. That's that's what comes first. Are numbers progressing in the gym? If so, yes, perfect muscle is being built. If no, we need more food and energy to support getting that extra progression in the gym. And as a result, we also want to see the scale weight trending up on in a gaining phase, like 0.3 to 0.6 of a kilogram per week. If you're watching from the US, basically just double that for pounds um, or times 2.2. So yeah, that, that is everything on how we did a mini cut. If you found this useful, then uh, subscribe. If you want me to, uh, if you want to join the Gorilla Platoon and get results like this, then there'll be a link in the description and you can book a call, but no pressure. So thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.